host, Crystal Cleveland, and welcome to this special edition of Gruesome Magazine. Tonight, we're doing something a little different, and instead of reviewing the latest in streaming and video on-demand horror movies, we're doing a filmmaker spotlight. Hey! Yay. With me tonight is writer, director, and special effects guru, uh, Decades of Horror 70s and 80s co-host, Bill Mulligan. How are you doing, Bill? Doing great. Really looking forward to this. Two of my favorite people on the screen with me right now. I feel the same way. And as I mentioned, we're doing something a little different this evening. And tonight we have a very special guest with us. We have the talented writer, director, cinematographer, etc. I mean, he basically is just a master of everything. Brett Mullen. Welcome, Brett. How are you hey. doing tonight? Doing awesome. Glad to be with you guys. This will be a lot of fun. Oh my gosh, I've been wanting this for so long. So it's great <laughs> to like get us all together. I like the introduction. I sound like a Swiss Army knife. Oh, yeah. Well, well you kind you of are. are. The Swiss Army knife of filmmaking. What? It's kind of awesome. So <laughs> could you give us a little background information on you, on, on, on some of the things that you've done in the past? And uh, we'll talk about the future in a minute. Yeah. So um, like you said, I'm director, cinematographer, editor. Um, I started out as a computer animator. Um, that's what my degree in. And uh, I ended up getting into filmmaking because I made films when I was a kid uh, with my dad's VHS camera. So uh, I'd, I'd make, uh, I made Deer the Living Dead. I made uh, Eat or Die. You know, I made all these like cool things with my friends. So I already had an app for shooting. So um, after starting like my first job with Delta Airlines, I was doing their internal graphics. And then they wanted me to edit stuff. And then I just kind of, I, I randomly actually found um, Bill and, and his friends on, uh, I think it was MySpace. It was MySpace at the time. Was it oh, my my, God, oh my MySpace. God, MySpace. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh so this finished a movie called Forever Dead, right? And they were uh, doing um, yeah. Get Ahead in the Biz. And there was a posting that they needed help. And I reached out to Christine Parker. And I asked her if I could show up. I'm, I'm like, I just got a camera. It's a NGL2. I'd love to film with you guys. And I, I showed up one day and did some shots and then... After that, you know, ended up doing a movie with you guys. That, you, so you were in Forever Dead? No, but I saw, like, I was searching people that were doing indie films. And, uh, yeah, I was like, somebody doing a zombie film. That's super cool. Yeah. I didn't know. Because you shot, uh, so we did a short called Dead of Night. Yes. And uh, we shot it at Brett's parents' house, as a matter of fact. I remember the, yeah, the, the little miniature horses that they had at the time, yeah. which was so cool. <laughs> and it was, it was a great place to shoot. And uh, it was obvious early on that, and anyone who works with Brett will tell you this, he's got the eye. He's got the eye. It's, yeah, it, well, it, you know, and I, I've seen this in other, one, in other ones too, like Between Hell and a Hard Place, where hey, we just had to shoot a scene, some people out in a cornfield or something, and it wasn't an inherently exciting shot. It's just, just tall grass, but he found, you know, he found a fence and then he's like shooting through the fence and framing it. And it looks great on the screen. And that's just one of those things. I don't think you can, I guess you can learn to be better at it, but if you don't know it, you don't know it. Some people can take a boring place and figure out a way to make it look interesting. And it just elevates the film. It was a pretty cool scene. So basically a dude was bearing a dude, right? Or a dude was bearing a dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The interesting fence and dirty tools. The last time in it. I don't know, but that was a that was a cool film. That was fun to do. I think anytime you can uh, let people have creative freedom with it, I mean that's when you get the best out of them. So, but um, for and, and I mean that was a Dead of Night was your first, um, I guess, fictional project. Yeah, wow. yeah. it was. Yeah. So it was. I, I think it won. I think it won best cinematography in in something that we we put it in one of the films. Yeah, I have. Uh, you probably know the festival based on it, but it had like a little bat cat thing, not a wooden thing. Maybe it was Con Carolinas. It, it might have been. It might have been. They used to really give cool um, handmade tools. awards back in the day. Yeah. So, so I mean, he knocked it out of the park you, with his first project. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and you you gear toward the horror genre, right? Is that is that your favorite? Yeah. Easily. Yes. Okay. Of course. I'm like, thank you. But, but what got you into your, I, I, this is something that always fascinates me. What gets people into horror? 
Yeah. So I grew up in a town that literally had 40 people in its graduation class. Like it was super small. Oh, I remember you saying that. Up. Yeah. And so, like our, our only store that had movies was, what was it called? Pick a flick. And basically it had a, it had a section in it that was horror, but it had like, it was like fenced off basically. It was in the black. <laughs> Oh, wow. Because you're bad if you like horror. Like, you're bad. You rolled her or whatever. And so, like, you weren't supposed to get them. So I had this thing, like, it was so cool and I could sneak in there and get one. Because if you go in there and they don't see you and you pull the VHS and bring it, they, they don't want to, like, check it for anything. Like, they didn't have, like, the smarts enough to, like, decipher one thing or the other. So I snuck, like, what was it? Actually, Full G Zombie was my first one. Oh, wow. Oh, well, yeah. that, that'll do it. Oh, I was going to wear my shirt to, tonight, too. And I, I like watching it. And I was like, oh, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. You know, I wasn't even allowed to watch something about man. So, like, you put a zombie and you're like, this is the coolest thing, like, ever. How old do you um, think you were at the time? I don't even remember. Uh, it was really young, though. Too yeah, young probably. for zombie. But, oh, well, that's how it happens. I was watching The Exorcist at five. I oh mean, my God. well, yeah, I was like, oh my God, so good. Oh my God, I'm so scared. It's so neato. Yeah. I was young enough that there was the scuba dive scene with the woman and I didn't say boobs. I was just like, uh, shark. <laughs> shark, yeah. So that's all you know. I was like, oh wow, a shark. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so Dead of Night was your first. And then what happened after that? Um, for it. Yeah, I mean, then I, I did the whole school thing. I went to the New York Film Academy. I, would, I did Full Sail. Uh, I still liked horror stuff, but I was a skateboarder and I did, you know, band stuff and, and whatnot. And then it was really meeting people locally that was doing it that I kind of got back into it. I mean, I had posters and mm -hmm. I had figures and all that kind of stuff, but I didn't, uh, I didn't really think of like making a movie until I saw people doing it. Because I was doing, at that time, you know, I started doing commercials. So I was doing, uh, I was working for a different couple of agencies and production companies, but uh, I was really focused on that and wasn't even thinking of movies as a thing. So when I did the, the movie with you guys and then we did Dead of the Night, <clears throat> and I did a couple of movies with Matt Moore. I did a couple with Jason. I was like, oh man, like I want to do something. So that's when I did Bombshell Bloodbath. And that was super cool because I, I hadn't had the creative reins before to, you know, kind of do my own thing. So that was super fun. And I mean, after going to conventions, doing all that kind of stuff, then you just become a lifer because you, you meet the fans. They're the best. They're literally like the yeah. possibly could be. People don't understand it when, you know, they're like, oh, you like horror? I've had people say that. They're like, why don't you make a comedy? I'm like, I can't. I but, you know, I'm pretty, I'm into the fan base. I'm into uh, the positivity. You know, you go to, uh, you know, convention or festival or anything like that. And it's just like a giant gathering of people that are just all friends and all root for each other. Like it's, it's super cool. So yeah, um, no matter what you say about the blood and all that stuff, like it's, <laughs> it's got a good heart to it. I like it. And that's, I'll probably always do horror. I mean, might do yeah. something eventually. But so. a Western would be cool. Well, it's oh, yeah. Yeah. Western I horror. Totally. Yeah, I like horror. I like and, horror. And, and now Bombshell Bloodbath is very much in the Fulci vein. I mean, was that, was that your homage to, to the Italian zombie epics? That you yeah, it had, a, it had a lot of influences in it. So I definitely had like Fulci's Beyond mm -hmm. um, as an influence in it, as well as like, well, um, zombie. But then some of Romero's work, like the doctor in it was highly influenced by, uh, you know, Day of the Dead. Right. Dr. Frankenstein. Um, and I, I have a lot of indie, I mean, I probably own over a hundred zombie films. I mean, I watch so many. Um, some of them were not even open. I just bought them to collect them. So that, that was like a big part of my heart for a while because that was the thing that got me started, you know, more so than the movies or anything like that. I, I tend to go towards the zombie ones and I tend to go towards the Italian ones as opposed to the American ones. Not that I don't like them. I just, the Italian ones, there's something about the music and the atmosphere and the, yes. and the special effects that weren't really touched in the States until, you know, maybe Day of the Dead when, you know, Savini was doing like some of the stomach rips and stuff. You're yeah. like, oh, God, that's cool. But. Now after, uh, after, yeah. after that, uh, you did, Phantasma, which is also known as Bloody Ballet. Yeah. 
Yes. And that was really Italian giallo horror inspired, just and, and absolutely gorgeous. I mean, yes. so is so is um, Bombshell Bloodbath. I mean, for a horror movie, there's a lot of beauty in it too, which I really appreciate. And and but Phantasma just had some glorious, gorgeous shots. Yeah, I love the way that turned out uh, from a visual standpoint. Um, some people don't get it. Some people don't get Bloody Ballet because it is a giallo film. I don't think a lot of people, unless you're into the genre, understand like kind of the, uh, it's not really about the plot as much as it's about the mystery of the killer itself. Yeah. Like it doesn't have to be these deep backgrounds of, of people. Um, it's more like visually stimulating than anything else. If you watch, you know, Suspiri or something like that, or I guess any of the Dario or yeah, Gentle movies. You don't watch, yeah. You don't watch Suspiria for the story, right? You're just like do 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 do. I got to watch that live uh, with Goblin. Oh wow! Oh. oh yeah. And I also got to see Fabio Frizi play the uh, Beyond soundtrack live with the. Movie. Oh cool! That was super. Yeah. Cool. Now wasn't wasn't um, in the states? Is it still being sold as Bloody Ballet? Is that the version that people are more likely to find it as? Yeah. Um, I mean, the story behind that, I mean, it's it's pulled right now, I believe, um, off of some stuff. Um, they're trying, trying to do a title change. But I remember, like, the big argument was is um, that they didn't think people would understand the title, which means, you know, ghost. Um, yeah. But, I mean, they're like, how is people in Italy supposed to know what Fantasma means? I said, because it's Italian. <laughs> that's shocking actually yeah yeah wow yeah i didn't i didn't even know the title change until a couple of weeks before it was released so that was the disappointing part is i had marketed the entire movie as right uh, of course that was so a, was was uh, that the distribution company that decided that that determined and made that decision yeah had oh. many, bouts, many bouts with them well, speaking but, of Okay, I want to go ahead and bring this up since we're up at the front. Speaking of distribution, dun, 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 like I didn't do that on purpose. Master of the segue. <laughs> what I've heard, and you've told us some wonderful information of something that you started, Brett. Could you give us some more information about what you as a good person, thankfully, a lot of you filmmakers are going to want to listen to this because mm -hmm. it's a really big deal. I know you've been burned. I know you've had a lot going on, and Brett, Brett has probably dealt with that, you know. Uh, what is happening with you, Brett? Uh, I, you know, I've, I've made several independent films. I've been through the process of, you know, with this new one I'm doing, I had to go through SAG. Um, I've, you know, I've produced them. I've done all this stuff. The one thing I haven't done is the distribution. So that's what I decided I was going to do. Um, <clears throat> I feel like with anything you do, you need to know all levels of everything. That's why, you know, before I directed, I wanted to make sure I knew how to shoot light do sound. I knew how to do art direction. I knew how to do everything before I directed so I could direct people properly. And, and with the distribution company, I've just looked at enough um, deals and all that. I just, I wanted to try to make something that was for indie artists for them to be able to make some money because the problem is, is that we're getting stuck in this Kickstarter phase to make money. And then you make the film, but you don't really make like the people in charge of it don't really make a profit off of it after yeah. all that work. Um, so the problem that I saw was that people are getting themselves locked into contracts and they're unfair contracts and, um, they, they pick apart, uh, you know, we're going to take your movie to AFM. So they charge the plane ticket, the food, all that to your movie. And you don't make profit until all that, you know, comes back. So uh, I understand why they do it. It's just, that's a hard system for an indie guy. Cause you were girl, you know, I'm not saying that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's hard to get, you know, past that. So what I've decided to do is do Black Glove Releasing. That's my independent company. Um, I'm starting with my own film first, actually, um, to try everything out that I have planned. So I got the rights back to Bombshell Bloodbath. So that'll be my first release domestically. And the idea is to give it a sweet and package like Arrow or a Synapse or something like that. That's like a, a thick director's two disc cut. Um, you know, it'll come with a, like for the first hundred people that buy it, you VHS, you'll get like, I've already talked to these people to get things rolling with prices and stuff like that. But the idea is for, um, you know, directors that want to release their film for the first time, they don't have to go to somebody that's going to, you know, 
change things about it and send it out, that this one's going to literally be their cut the way they wanted it and selling it in limited editions to get your rights back as opposed to um, signing like a year contract of seven, 10 years. Instead, it's like three 3,000 limited copies. But what they do is they get a 50-50 cut of that. So what I'm trying to do is to create a, um, a you know site where a lot of people, you, you filter in a lot of indie artists where you go and you say, hey, I can pick up this and this and this film by them. And it'll link you with other actors that are in their movies and send you to their page and create like kind of a page system. Awesome. And my thoughts are like after, you know, I feel like so many of my friends are indie artists um, in the industry and, oh, you know, everybody almost knows everybody. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. And in our own way, like we're known to each other, just like, you know, you, you like, you know, some sort of person from this movie or this movie or, and we all like working together. So I think there's a, there's definitely a profit that can be made from that for, for both sides, for distribution and indie. Um, there's just, you know, getting everybody together in one group to kind of make that happen. But that's, that's what I've been working on. I've been that's working hard cool. on that. So uh, if, if I can get it, so it feels like a guarantee for people to get their money back for what they spent in film and get like a sweet ass cut. Right. Their movie, the way they want it. And then listen, when they're done selling those copies to get their movie back, they can sell it to somebody bigger and do VOD if they want or something well, else. I mean, it sounds like a good, almost any filmmaker will tell you that distributors, there's a lot of horror stories. Yeah. Good. I mean, I've, I've had mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I want to keep doing it and I don't, I don't really want to go full on. Um, I'm not really interested in doing Hollywood films. That's just where I am. I'm comfortable where, where I am. I like doing the commercial work I do. I like the freedom of independent films. And, um, you know, I feel like a lot of Hollywood's pretty crooked and I yeah. don't really, don't really feel like I want to get involved with that. That's why I wrote, wrote a movie called red carpet reveal. And it's, it's like an exposure of Hollywood. I'm pretty proud of that, but that might be something that I do. I, I, um, was titling it a Phantasma too. And it's an extension of bloody ballet Phantasma, mm -hmm. but it's a, it's a totally different movie in a totally different realm. And then it hooks the two together. It explains a whole bunch about Phantasma. You have to do it. Mm. Sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd, be, yes. it'd be hard to write a, a fictional horror movie about Hollywood that <laughs> could be more horrible than some of the reality. I mean, if, <laughs> yeah. if you look at you look at the whole Harvey Weinstein thing and and everything going on and, and Epstein and all these others, and you'd be like, well, this is this is not well written. Nobody would believe this. Nobody could be this awful and get away with it for so long and then commit suicide in front of everybody. It's like, yeah, but that's what really happened. Well, I think <laughs> that's why a lot of people don't speak up because yeah. I don't think I know a single woman who hasn't had that happen to them in some way shape or form mm -hmm. ever yeah. yeah it's just it, before hashtag me too it was kind of just a normal part of life honestly it's pretty baked and, into the system obviously and, that, and then all these people are like wow we had no idea you're like really really <laughs> you guys made jokes about this at the academy awards and now you're pretending oh we had no idea this was going on okay yeah Good times. I do want to say that I don't think that all distribution is bad. I don't think all distribution. Oh, of course not. Oh. Absolutely, yeah. I think it deserves a, a fresh alternative. So I know some good people that do it. Like for instance, uh, Tetra, who released um, the Italian cut of Bombshell Bloodbath. They're super cool people. Yeah. And they, I've gotten paid, you know, fairly for them distributing the movie, and they've just been honest and upfront. Um, That's a, there's people who do it. I, just, uh, I guess I'm trying to figure out a way for people to make more money. That's, yes. That's, because I cool. really believe I think, that people watch these movies. They do. I think a lot of people also, I have, I've heard from friends who are like, I don't even know how to go about getting distribution. They don't even know where to start right. or, you know, they're like, I don't know what to do. I think this is good. And it may or may not be. That's irrelevant, really. But they don't even know the first place to go or where to look for proper distribu distribution. Which so makes just, them vulnerable to yeah, being taken very advantage much so. of. This says, I'll, I'll distribute your movie. And I'll, I have contacts with Walmart and Netflix and all this. So I was like, 
they're not, they generally would not take a style of indie movie because it just isn't mm -hmm. something that fits on their platform very well. Um, so they may have contacts with that, but it, what happens 90% of the time is it just ends up on Amazon prime or right. maybe, and then you get a box art that you don't want. <laughs> he doesn't say anything about, it. they might even change the description. I think <laughs> the description of bombshell bloodbath that first got released wasn't even remotely. I don't think it was even about <laughs> the movies about, <laughs> which makes um, you think they didn't watch it. And then they changed the title and then they, mm -hmm. you know, like the box art of, uh, bloody ballet isn't even anybody that's in the movie. It's some random ballerina in blood. It's like, okay. Well. And you've been really cool with some of the covers and things that you've come up with. Some, you know, you've commissioned some beautiful art for your yeah. films. Mm -hmm. oh, 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 yes, ooh. yes. I want to see. Yeah, I want to oh, see. I'm, I'm glad I brought this up. <laughs> I recently got this book. I'm drawing oh, it. yeah. I think Shane posted that, didn't he? I think he did, yeah. What's in there? Uh, we have Bombshell Bloodbath. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. That's beautiful. I'm going to see this. That's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. We got Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. Pretty cool. That looks awesome. Really? It's beautiful. Yeah, I've been lucky enough to have, like, awesome artwork with each one. I mean, I like the uh, illustration style. That's that's my deal, but... I couldn't believe the first time you showed me the poster for Belladonna, I, I just about fell out of my chair because it was absolutely yeah. gorgeous and looked like it should have been in a movie theater back in the seventies or something. Just, you know, some kind of thing they don't make anymore. She, uh, she ended up, popularity blew up right after making that poster. She ended up doing, uh, I think she did a poster for Star Wars and she did oh, awesome. for some Disney movie. Like she's been doing huge stuff, commissioned. I mean, she was like a, a talent that I randomly found. I was just like typing in mm. upcoming illustrators and I like searched for hours and I saw her something like, she's so good. And then she's like, I'll make your movie poster. You know, just all sweet. I think she's like 15, so crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wait, what? How much? Wait, well, okay. Yeah. Like she, yeah, I'm like. Maybe oh, 17. She's now. amazing. She's I'll have amazing. To put up, I'll have to put up the poster when we're talking about it. Just oh yeah. She's so yes. good. She's so talented. <sighs> So, so stuff too. the story of Belladonna is just a great illustration of how Brett is amazing. He just calls me up one day and it's like, you know, I've got like a two week window where nothing's happening. I'm like, okay. He goes, I'd like to make a movie. I'm like, okay. So when, when are we talking here? And I'm used to saying, you know, we got two weeks in 2025 or something. And it's like the next month. I'm like, <laughs> So, so he's like, do you have any scripts lying around? I was like, do I? Favorite. So, you know, I, I was like looking and like, okay, what, what could be done? I'm thinking relatively quickly, relative, not a whole lot of fancy special effects or anything. And I sent him a script that I had and he really liked it. And he suggested some changes that made it much more complex than it was before, but okay, he's the one shooting it. So, you know, we, we hammered that out and made it better, I think. And then by golly, he did it. It's like next thing I know, he's casting people. He has this incredible location that breaks my heart that no one else is ever going to be able to use it again because they fixed it afterwards. It was just an, a one of a kind, gorgeous thing. Yeah. And uh, shot this film, and it was amazing. I've never, I've never seen a project come together so quickly and be made so well in that short period of time. But you, by this point, you have a team of people that you can depend on when you have, you know, you, you're going you're to gonna need good lighting and you know, someone who can provide that for you. They've worked with you. And yeah. Uh, I, I think anytime you work in groups and you don't have to communicate something to someone, then they know your style. Uh, definitely, you know, Matt Moore for my lighting. He always, uh, mm -hmm. I don't Great really job. Have much. I'm, you know, he's a, uh, he's a super pro, but even, you know, with Joe Harp and, um, Tina Reynolds and stuff like that. Like they, they all kind of, yeah. you know, my style, they have their own style too, but it's really cool. They take things that I like that they know I like, and then they add their own thing to it. I, it's just, that's what I like so much about filmmaking is the collaboration. Honestly, that's the coolest part. So, I mean, you just, I love that you can see something as soon. I like, I can totally tell you're the type of person that absolutely has a vision for the whole thing already before you go in. 
You're yeah. a machine. You're a machine, really. That is a special <laughs> gift that not everyone has. Like, and I, I try to explain this to people. I'm like, can you envision it? Can you see it? And I know you can. Like you had done, you had shot what? I think you had done 40 pages in like three days or something when you were doing what we're going to talk about shortly. Your yeah. one of your newer films coming out. Like that's oh, so refreshing. So <laughs> awesome. I just love yeah. to hear that. I don't know how I would be able to do something if I didn't obsess over it. So that's the thing. I, <laughs> yes. Like, yes. I'll, I'll be like in the car, I'll be like here and like <laughs> I already have a soundtrack plan, like dun, 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 like and cut, you know. Dun, dun. <laughs> this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. <laughs> well, it was fun. It was fun yeah. being on the set for for Belladonna, just watching everybody working together so well. And I, I don't think I've ever seen such a stress-free set. There was no conflict that I was aware of. Everybody cooperating and working together, um, just doing just doing a top notch job, and just totally happy. I don't know that I'll ever have an experience where I'll be as happy being a part of a project again as I was for that one. Because it really, t- even if we work together again, it'll never be this. Hey, let's let's make a movie. Let's put on a show. I, that was just something. That's a one of a kind opportunity that comes along, and then to have it not be haphazard not be half-assed as you would expect something like that to be, but to really be a professional, <laughs> nice production. Uh, and, uh, and look, look how beautiful. You know, I know. That's, what I'm saying. Yeah, I... that's what I'm saying. You know, I mean, that, that could be yeah. right out of uh, a Fulci movie back when Fulci had a budget. And, uh, you know, it was, it's just, it's a beautiful shot. It it, is. The whole thing is, it's just full of beautiful shots. She had, she had never done acting before. That was one thing I remember that was so cool. Allison literally came in and, and she, she had to play, you know, a blind woman. And the contacts that I had ordered, uh, they, they were also made, but they were so foggy, she literally couldn't see. We had to walk her from scene to oh. scene. So well, yeah. that is like, that's an awesome performance. And she, um, she owned it. So yeah, yeah was, she was, was phenomenal. Was She's beautiful. Out. In that Sterling, David, everybody was just top notch, and and just I mean the the first shots where she's coming down that gorgeous spiral staircase. We go to this we go to this place. It was a woman's um what, what was it what was it called um it was a woman's club um, woman's club from the from God knows how long ago it was well, built. Originally wasn't a woman's club, but then it became- yeah, it, it was a mixture of weird twenties Art Deco. Um, Greco-Roman statues, a spiral staircase with a stained glass window at the top. You're like, this this place can't possibly exist. And if yeah. it did exist, it was made for Brett Mullen. And, and she, there he is spinning <laughs> that camera around and just uh, some, some gorgeous shots. Beautiful. I love how I do the locations because I, I always call and they tell me no. Uh, see, I was going to say, no one can say no to you, right? No one would say no to you. All I do every time is I say, well... I would like to meet you in person. And then <laughs> yes. they'll they just be like, well, that's fine. You can start I'm like, do you do tours? <laughs> that's how I did most of Phantasma stuff. Um, but it was like one of those ones that were like, or at least one of the ones for uh, Killer Babes was like, uh, they said no. I was like, well, you know, can you explain to me why? And they're like, well, you know, we did this horror movie here and they, they broke stuff and they, you know, yeah. burnt, you know, like, electricity stuff and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, mm. well, I mean, I'm sorry that happened. I said, but if you're willing to meet me, I'll show you <laughs> on how to do it professionally moving forward. Mm. Oh boy. <laughs> and look, oh, wow. look at yeah. that. You just want to go, what do you want? Okay, sir. Right. Okay, Mr. Mullen. Fine. <laughs> yeah. We'll do it. Yeah. Well, and also you're a genuinely nice person. And and yeah, that that is a thing. I hate these I hate these people who go in and ruin it for the rest of us. They go in there and trash the place, and then the next time some decent person comes along and asks, they say no. Who would say yes twice? Yeah, I mean that's almost unheard of. Like you you're you're brilliant. But it's true. I think they see your heart. It's genuine. I would trust you with whatever. Like, I just want to make movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's so cute. Come on, Martha. Keep my dream. <laughs> Please. <laughs> oh, God, to, your place will look so good. <laughs> I'll, be like, I'll be like, I'll shoot some extra footage for you and you can keep it. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a good deal, really. Yeah. I mean, your footage yeah. is worth, you know, that eye. Yeah, I, though. It's like right. the, the jail, jail in Phantasma. They're like, no. 
this is a this is a jail that's no longer working and we don't do that. I was like, have you ever thought of making a documentary on your jail? And they're like, no. I can make raw footage and use it. <laughs> right. like, okay, come on. Yeah. Come to me and film in it. Okay. And you know it's going to look good too. What camera do you use now? Um, oh, he has the red. I know. I wanted to hear him say yes. it though. The red camera. I mean, have you not best. seen the photo? Oh. I'm like, I'm like, uh, <laughs> uh, no one deserves it more than yeah. you, though. So I can't. How could anyone? Yeah. When we're in Belladonna so. shooting in that castle, what what's the name of that castle? Um, castle McCullough. Yeah. He had. It looks like a box. It looks like a shoe box or something. It doesn't look anything like a camera. But then I saw the footage that was coming out. Now, normally, folks, you you shoot something and it looks like garbage. And then you find someone who knows how to do color correction and it looks like, you know, less garbagey. <laughs> this thing looked unbelievable, just pure right out of the camera before you had done any fixing it. The, 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 the blacks were blacks. The reds were red. Everything. It was just, uh, just candy. <laughs> Gorgeous. Yeah, mm. I heard on that pretty hard. Uh, <laughs> I'm a gear nut. That's one thing that keeps me mm -hmm. doing like regular commercial work. Because it's real, like it's cool, like doing commercial stuff. But at the same time, when you have new pieces of equipment to use and stuff like that, it's like it's like a new paintbrush. You're like, all right, I got batteries. Geeking over batteries on this one, I was doing that sci-fi Detroit Evolution film and I, oh, like, right. I ordered new batteries and I was obsessed about the new batteries because how long they lasted with the red. Everyone's like, I don't get it, they're just batteries. So it's like, yeah, but look at the red outlines on them. They're and not the same them. too. It's true, they're not, they're definitely, I, I, I mean, I don't even, you know, I mean, just with my lights, using LEDs and my lights, all batteries are not created equal. Yeah, we sure. should mention that um, the Detroit, um, Remind me again, the, the full title. Evolution? Evolu Detroit Evolution, based on a video game that I was completely unaware of. And oh, that was a great uh, Written and directed by Michelle and Antoine. I hope I pronounced her name right because I get it wrong a lot. And she, I didn't want to say it because I didn't want to mess I it know. up. I She's super, <laughs> she is super talented, a real talent to watch. And it, it certainly looks gorgeous as you would expect. How do you feel you know, now having directed movies of your on your own? How does it feel to go back? to being a cinematographer for another director is does is that at all difficult or do you have no problem just going back to that role no oh, i love it i mean the reason i like i guess the biggest kick out of doing camera work and the thing i miss about directing if i do shoot it is i like the um i like taking someone's interpretation filming it and then if i can get that like oh this is exactly what i wanted or like i love this like i i totally love that stuff about filming so I, I love shooting for people because I, I love the reaction standpoint of it. So, I mean, that, that makes me happy to like nail something that I'm supposed to. If I'm filming for myself, then it's a little bit different because I like already know what I want and I already know what I'm going to do. And I don't get that reaction, you know, from somebody that's supposed to be, it's their creative baby. So like, I know from, you know, just making my own, how important, you know, all that is and like to see it for the first time and stuff. So there's something beautiful in that that I don't get by directing. So I love shooting stuff still. And, uh, you know, I'd be happy to shoot more, you know, for sure. Um, directing yeah. first, but I love camera so much. Okay. Is, is directing your, is, is, that, is, that your, is that your favorite role? Is that what you prefer to do? Or do you like being that awesome cinematographer that you are? I mean, oh. from, a, from a bad standpoint, I mean, I like the control of directing because yeah. – uh, you know, sometimes when I see things that I think are not going to work and mm -hmm. you get vetoed on it, and usually it's commercial work more so than, you know, indie films. Mm -hmm. Those are a lot of gambles, but uh, it drives me crazy on commercial shoots when, you know, something's just not going to turn out right, but, you know, someone won't listen or, you know, they don't trust that I know how to organize time enough that I say, you know, we can switch this lens and recalibrate this and get it. It's going to take us 10 minutes, but, you know, we'll that up because this shot won't take so long and they're like we just can't risk it it's like so you want like you want this wide lens or this thing that doesn't look good like you just do it and then you know you just wish that you would have had the so say to you know do it your way but that's why i kind of like directing is is being able to like i i get a high on creating like taking little bits and pieces of like everybody's creativity and putting it where i think it works really well because i've always said about like directing it's not really you and your like 
it's like the biggest role of a director is hiring people you trust to be in positions that benefit yeah. the whole film and then being able to pull the strings of like what works for each thing and what, you know, time wise, I only get this time wise. I only get this, like, yeah. where do I go with it? So that part is like really cool. And you don't get that from other departments. Um, that, that's why I like directing better, but uh, cameras is cool because it's more chill. You know, you don't have to make those decisions. So you're just like, I just got to make it look pretty. And then you get breaks. You actually get to eat snacks. <laughs> you know, I love that he says that, but I think for him, because you have such a good eye and you're so good at it, it's like, ah, but I think most people are like, most, most cinematographers would are pulling out their hair, just trying to make yeah. something as beautiful as you make. But I get that's, what he, I get what he's true. saying though, because if, mm -hmm. you know, if you're, <laughs> if you're the writer or whatever, and you, you have these visions in your head, and then somebody else makes the film and their visions are not going to be exactly yours. And you look at it and usually it's like, well, okay, that's not how I really saw it. But when it's, when it's being done by someone who's really good, you see it mm -hmm. and you're like, Oh wow. That's not only how I saw it. It's, it's better than how I saw it. And, and you just, yeah, it, it's just so much fun to have that happen to see something you created come to life. I mean, that's the whole, a screenplay that doesn't get made might as well have never existed. It's not even like a book that might you figure out ah, someone will read my book one day after I'm gone, <laughs> but a screenplay that doesn't get made is like, yeah, when you die, no one's even going to remember it existed. It's the hard drive is going to get thrown into the trash. <laughs> yeah. So, so, you know, you want to see it done and then to have it be done and have it turn out. That's something you're really proud to be a part of it. It's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. You write good scripts. So. Oh, thank you. Thank <laughs> I you. I love your dialogue. Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. like, that's that's real. <laughs> I feel like mine are so short-handed sometimes. It's like hi, then they that that that. Dialogue's definitely my strength. Uh, I've I have some weaknesses, but I, I like the dialogue. But you know, but you know, if it's not shot well, there's nothing more boring than watching two people talk. If it's not if it's not shot well, and a lot of people they just nail down the camera and it, and it might as well be a play to be you able to. Five minute version of Belladonna. What's that? Did I, did I ever show you the 45 minute version? No. There's okay, a 45 so, minute version? There's a 45 minute version. So, Wait a minute. ended up being 25 minutes long. And that's after I cut it down so much. And basically, Bill has um, long dialogue and I have long shots. Yeah. So, <laughs> what would happen, like, somebody that would normally walk down a staircase in 15 seconds would take five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when we were talking about this and, and he's like, totally picture this. do, do we awesome. need to cut some of this out? <laughs> and I did what no writer would normally ever do. I'm like, just, just cut, no, cut the scene, cut the lines, cut whatever, but do not cut that spiral staircase. Are you out of your mind? No. You know, it's like, if now see, if I, when I wrote that script, I intended to make it, it was, it was a, a different thing altogether. It was more of a film noir thing. There was very little horror in it into the end and the monster was completely different. If I had known it was going to be a Brett Mullen joint, I would have preemptively cut a lot of dialogue out because I would expect that she comes down a staircase would not be do 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 do. It would be something really spectacular and cool with great music to go with it. So you know, there there's that. But no, the choices you made to cut it down. But yeah, there was a lot cut out. But I've forgotten most of that. I would love to see the forty-five minute version. I think I will agree when it's over that the twenty-five minute version was the right way to go. Yeah, I was trying to make it, you know, festival yeah. evil. Yeah, and and forty-five was sticking it in a weird place for it. Yeah, um, yeah. Who watches a forty-five minute movie? <laughs> That's <man. you> know. <laughs> I watch a forty-five minute Brad Mullen movie. I'd and and there isn't enough story to to justify that too. You know, there, we, we, if we were to if we were to expand that idea into a feature, there'd have to be a lot of subplots and all kinds of other things. You know, the the story wasn't meant to be that long. But I would love to see that version. Actually, that sounds pretty awesome. It's pretty cool, actually. So hmm. uh, I really, <laughs> I'm like, my mind is blown. I, I'm totally unaware. You might as well have said, "Hey, I got a copy of London After Midnight. You want to see it?" Yeah. <laughs> I just got. I just got these in the mail today, Blood of the Mummy. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, yay. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So that that actually is one of your most recent projects, right, Bill? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. 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 That's, that's our that. lat- latest feature. And I am looking forward to another feature that I understand yes. is, is being made, but I'm curious just how. You totally stole my segue. Thank you. you. Yeah. You want to just erase all that and go right ahead and do it yourself, and no, I'll just I'm pretend just to be surprised. No, 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 no. no. Go for it. Let's hear your version. Yeah, I want to hear. Oh, your I was just gonna say. And speaking, I was literally about to go. Yeah, speaking of upcoming, I hear you have something upcoming. Do but tell. Do tell. Killer babes and the frightening. Yay. Mascot. Which I, I suppose at this point, um, because it's been in Wait, production. Could you, could you say that one more time? I think it got cut yeah. out a little bit. And that's oh, a title okay. that needs to needs to be heard. It's called Killer Babes and the Frightening Film Fiasco. It's a, it's a two-part movie. Oh, cool. Killer what? Babes and the Frightening Film Fiasco. Just, it combines the two names to make Killer Babes and the Frightening Film Fiasco. That's why there's the ant. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. See, I've cool. really kept myself okay. deliberately in the dark about this. Thing. On that, so you guys got a special treat. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's got a lot of, a lot of talent in it. Um, it's got uh, Linnea Quigley uh, yes. from Eternal Living Dead, Night of the Demons. Uh, it's got Tiffany Sheptis from Victor mm. Crowley, uh, Sharknado 2. Uh, it has Lisa Wilcox from A Nightmare on Elm Street 4 or 5. Uh, it's got Tristan Risk, uh, American Mary. She was in the new Rabbit. Uh, oh, awesome. Crystal Robinson, uh, Echoes of Fear. Um, she's, she's really good. Um, let's see. Jenna Cannell of Terrifier. She's oh, in it. yay. And the cool thing about this movie, too, is there's not a day player in the entire movie. Everybody oh. that's casting it are a full character, like a big character. Oh, um, good. It's got... Um, Emma Bellamy, she was dollface in the Strangers. Oh, cool. that's pretty cool. Oh, cool. Um, now, so, where'd, you, where'd you meet all these all these people? I literally flew around and met them at conventions and gave them the script and talked to them into <laughs> doing the movie. Um, I ended up shooting a pilot in Atlanta for Jenna Cannell. Um, she was the director and I DP'd for her. So after that, I asked her if she wanted a role. And at the time I didn't have a spot for her, but the person that was playing um, Cadence in the movie, she dropped out. And then I was like, hey, Jenna, you want to do this? And she's just like, cool, whatever. Like, all right, sweet, let's do it. So it's, uh, when I describe it, I guess I say it's, it's got the comedy of Bombshell Bloodbath, probably more funny. It's like a, the style of it is very like, Tucker and Dale versus Evil, okay. or maybe yeah. you know, Good choice. somewhere where it's got like violence, but it's funny. But it is it is bloodier than Phantasma and, and Bloody Hell. Okay. It's definitely got a lot of gore to it. Uh, bloody uh, Phantasma had some real. Bl- there's a scene. There's a death in there that is one of the most over the top, uh, amazing gore fests ever. So, which, which one do you think? Uh, about the cuts? The, the like coming out of the body, the killer oh. actually. Oh yeah. Yeah, that that blew me away when I saw that at the at the theater. Um, just great effect. So that's a bold statement that it's going to be even bloodier. Okay, something to look forward to. Exciting. Funny, so I'm uh, I'm showing my she, my girlfriend wants to see like some movies because she's avoided watching the movies that I do. So. <laughs> Phantasma, and when the stomach scene happens, she goes. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, you didn't prepare. Yeah, well, I mean, the trailer had the eyeball cut, so I mean, that was like kind of helping the plan, you know. But I don't know. I like the gore. I like yeah. it. And then, I do too. Yeah, you know, I always tell people I, I like them to put their own spin on things, and you never tell that to Joe Harp. <laughs> So when he like always meets with me and he's got his notebook, he's got all these like, he draws everything out completely. He's like, look at this. I think we can rip her jaw off and do this. And I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> good. Yeah. Sounds good. I mean, I just like in scripts from now on and be like, and they die. So Under- insert Joe Harp. <laughs> you were in the middle of filming this yeah. before quarantine happened, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay, so explain what's happened now and the effects of, unfortunately, this quarantine on your filming and where you see it going from here. Yeah, I know everybody's in the same same boat, you know, yeah. when it comes to it. And I think, 
you know, people are starting to realize now if you do something on like a really uh, local and, sm you know, smaller level with less crew that you can, um, you can get away with it. Yeah, get, I did. Get, get movie. Uh, this one's complicated because I have two actresses from Cal or from Canada and have oh. people from California and people from New York flying in. So it's like, talking to their agents and making sure that everybody's comfortable. And it's just like, it's not to a point where anybody's comfortable yet. And sure. the movie has so much, uh, so much like, violence and everything in it. It's like, it would be hard to like, how do you get those people that close and how do you do it? It'd be literally like when you watch UFC on TV, like how they're doing it with no crowds, but they're still bleeding on each other. It's right, like, right. <laughs> like that intense. You're just like, all right. So uh, I've pushed it back again. I was I was hoping to film it uh, next month, mm -hmm. finish it, and then have it for a Halloween release and just do a, oh, I guess, yeah. set up for Halloween. But it's just not going to happen. So yeah. I've, uh, I've requested November. So that's what I've requested to try to get it done. And we'll we'll see if it, you know, we, we don't know what the world's going to be like. We don't know. Like, no how idea. Um, there's a case, the worst case scenario is that I have to be smart about who's like coming out and try to just get it done because there is kids in it. So uh, the kids are a year older now than the oh, first. Oh, it's going to change. Oh boy. Yeah. yeah. I already looked at the lead boy and he's already like got muscles and back flipping. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, before he was, they age so much in a year. It's unbelievable. Uh, that's, yeah. 14 to 15 years old. This is a huge yeah. difference. So now he's taller than his teacher. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, we're going to have to oh. figure some stuff out. So, um, it's been, it's been hard because also the money's all locked, you know, a way I was able to do the movie was to be guaranteed. So it's right. guaranteed it's locked into these systems. I don't get the money back. I just got to like wait for a pocket of time to do it. So, right. um, I do have cool locations. I've got a castle. Nice. Uh, <gasps> did, like a roller skating rink scene that was really cool. <sighs> oh yeah. I did see uh, some of the castle's really cool. It's got like caves and stuff in the look. It's like, oh, wow. where is it? Where is, is it? It's near yes. the Blue Ridge Parkway. It's got like six oh, parks sweet. where like witches and stuff will be. Oh man. That's awesome. I can't wait to it's see important. it. It's gonna be amazing. Popular babes that it's a it's a poke on horror films. It's a trope. Good. So it, it like just literally it takes all these genres and yeah. then it can be hot hot there. And mm -hmm. then also, also, well, no, I won't get into that. Oh, that's what I'll give you. It's fun. <laughs> I love the, I love really the title. It reminds me of some of those trauma movies from the 80s, the, uh, you know, Killer Babes and the Slime Bowl, Bolarama, or what was that? The one Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers. I don't know. They just the titles that you, you would get on a videotape every week. There'd be new videos in the blockbuster and, the titles, which is, well, I gotta, I gotta see this movie just to figure out what that title even means. Yeah, that was one of the ones Linnea was in. Yeah. Uh, Linnea. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This movie is literally, you know, I'm a huge fan of these these movies. So, um, for her, she has not had a role since like Night of the Demons, Return of the Living Dead, like mm -hmm. that time that she's been so badass as she is in this movie. She's literally, yeah. it's cool. She plays a witch. Yeah. Um, nice. But she's like, she's dark. Like, it's cool. She read it and she goes, like, I didn't know if I was going to get her or not. And I was, uh, but I meet her in New Jersey and like, I had the script and I was just like telling her about it. And she goes, I have always wanted to be a witch. And I was like, oh, <laughs> awesome. and she's like, so awesome. the character. I was like, it's literally like the reason all the fans love you. That's, that's the character. Yeah. And, um, so it worked hard on that character. It's pretty cool. And Debbie Rashawn's in it too. Um, she did a lot of the trauma movies. She was also in a bloody ballet. Yeah. Fantastic. And that, oh my gosh, it, yeah. I love her in your movie. Yes. Yeah. This time she's evil. So Yay! Uh, something different <laughs> with her. And uh, Lisa Wilcox is also a witch. So she's super cool. The That'd witches be, are the best. Yeah. It was like, yeah. Cause she's, you know, she's a hero in most of it. So it's cool to see the opposite. That'd be really neat. How, what do you? What kind of vibe are you going for visually here? Is it is it kind of a continuation of of the look that you're you're becoming kind of known for? Or I think I like what I planned on is making it a little more stylized. Um, 
That sounds weird because I feel like the other stuff is stylized. Yeah, but- pretty stylized already. <laughs> Like, I want to put, like, zollies and other things in it that are just kind of funky. What's a uh, zolly? That's, like, where you you would uh, truck in, but then you pull the focus the other way. And it oh. Keeps the, uh, Something you know, like, like, a, like a play on the word dolly, right? Like, yeah. when you dolly, yeah. You know, Jaws, when that's they... Cute. Jaws, start, it makes it look like the background is receding from you or racing into you. It's a cool, it's a cool <gasps> technique, yeah. Oh, I can't wait to see what you do with this. Yeah. Actually, the, the camera crew that I had during the first part were... AC's off the walking dead. Oh, wow. Uh, that was super cool. Brock, Brock Bird and some of his guys. So he DP'd the first part. Um, I think he's going to do the second. It really depends on crew. It depends on everything, yeah. but he just shot beautiful, beautiful stuff. Um, I did camera on some just because I'm, um, I, I get so like, I've yeah. pictured it this way and I just need to jump on camera for myself. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Brock rocked it. Um, it's just awesome. It was really cool. It was a great experience. It had been my favorite experience. Um, uh, I guess less stress because it was the biggest crew I've ever had. And that took a lot of pressure off of me to mm. be able to have people. It's a, there was so much downtime. Like I had time to sit with the actors and talk. Like that That's doesn't wear on any sense. I was like going through scenes with them on the day. I'm like, here we go. Like, you know, we're going to be like this. Everyone's lighting stuff. I was like, cool. Usually I'm like talking to them while I'm like hooking up camera. I'm like, you're going to be aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's awesome. It's really cool. It's a beautiful movie. It's the best stuff I've ever done. So that's why oh. I said that it's been on a, a block because I was on such a, yeah, everything was, planned, everything was ready to go. And then, um, you know, you just stop with the world. That's really what it is. Do you yeah. feel like you'll be able to jump right back in when you get the okay and every, it, there's not going to be any rush? It's take mental preparing again because there's that obsession, you know, yeah. you get that drive, you get. And um, with it, you know, st- stopping the rescheduling is so hard with SAG. Yeah. To do everything and get all the approval. So it's like every time I push it, it's like brutal. Um, so it, it kind of sucks it out of you. It'll be fine once once I know that things are clear and it's actually going to happen. It'll be like that month where I'm not like doing anything because I'm just totally obsessing on it. Um, be good. I mean, it's stressful too because the effects, you know, they can't get them in. You know, for a while, nobody was shipping anything and there wasn't anything available. The costumes couldn't be made. It's oh, like right. Every- yeah. Sitting and waiting. Mm. Haircuts are getting longer. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Your hair looks great. I mean, really. Yeah. But, I'm actually feeling like mine's getting too long. Oh, too no. Long. Never cut it. Do you edit your own films? Or do you have an editor that you work with? I edit. Yeah. yeah. Wait, you... Wow. I, well, I was an editor before I was a camera person. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Wow. I, th- I think that's part of the reason why you're so efficient and get things done so fast because of the director. <laughs> a lot of times the director is basically working for the editor. It's the director's job to get enough footage that they can throw it to the editor and they can hammer a story out of it. And you don't really know which way the editor is going to go. So, okay, long shot, medium shot, close up shot and everything. But if you're the director and the writer and the editor, you pretty much know what shots you want. So you're not going to waste your time doing a long shot, knowing that you have no intention of using anything other than a medium or close up. I think that helps a tremendous. That's definitely the the way it is when it comes to filming. I already have the cuts in my head. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, Yeah. that vision, I'm telling you, it's funny because I'll know, like, I'll hear a couple different takes of something, and I'm able at this point to pick out little pieces that I hear them here. Mm-hmm. Like, the in mind, I'm like, I'm going to use that, that. All I need them is yep. to say this segment good. And then they hit that, and they're like, well, I didn't like that take. I was like, it's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I know you got it because, you know, I heard what I wanted. In the face. Just trust me on it. But uh, it can be good and it can be bad because sometimes, you know, having too much creative freedom is not, not good. You know, mm-hmm. you need to. You need to have other input. But I think that's why it's important to let the other crew members be creative in there. Right. Um, that's, you know, them just going off and making stuff. If I need to make adjustments, I will. But it's needed to have its unique flair. You know, so it just doesn't look like something I do. But it's like, it's all these collective people doing cool things. So do you, okay, it's like switching gears just a little bit. Do you have any advice to indie filmmakers out there. I mean, you have, you, you are pretty much 
a genius when it comes. I mean, I'm just going to say this, like you are very, very, you're incredibly talented. Like I've looked at your, you know, obviously I've looked at your stuff and I'm just like, some of it like makes my jaw drop some of the shots and some of the look of your things. And I can totally tell you have the vision. What if some of these filmmakers don't exactly have that vision or, and aren't able to do all of the things that you are able to, you're, you're a one man stop. You could go Mm -hmm. and film a flower tomorrow and put together a whole movie. But there's plenty of people out there who could not do that. So do you have any advice to those filmmakers out there? Yeah. Um, I mean, talent comes in time, you know, so it's nothing, uh, nothing anybody needs to be down about. Uh, I think anytime you complete a film, you'll watch it a year later and you'll see things that you've improved on. And you, your first reaction will be like, I don't like it anymore because of this or <laughs> you know, this sucks about it. But just remember that it's not you. It's not your present work. It's what you did. You know, when I show people bombshell bloodbath, I'm like, well, this was Brett in 2012. You know, I can't be like, well, this shot wasn't exactly what I do now because <laughs> it was the best of my ability when I did it. Yeah. Just know that with filmmaking, no matter what you do, there'll be things that go the way you wanted it to. There'll be things that don't go the way you want it to. It's going to happen on every set. So you can't get mad because something doesn't work. There's too many elements. It's just it's nature. So things that are going to be better than you expect it to be and other things are going to be worse than you expected it to be. But that's the cool part is because some things that you envision will turn out better, other things won't. And then you just calculate those. Don't get mad at yourself. Just be like, this is what went wrong with it. Why did it go wrong? And then try to, um, you know, repair that for the next time. I had some people that really sent me some like brutally nasty stuff on Bombshell Bloodbath or reviewing. I'm thinking like, it's the first time I've ever done a movie, you know, <laughs> got it with a DSLR, get out of my face. And then um, what I responded to him is I sent him a message and I said, well, I'm sorry you didn't like the film. I took your notes and I sent him Phantasma. And I said, I'd like you to do a review on this one. That's how I handled it because that's, that's showing where you progressed. It's not letting someone yeah. say that you were this person because of this movie you did at this time. Like we all grow, we're all artists. So I would say if you're in any person getting into it, then just, you know, be like, be proud of what you're doing at the moment. Don't beat yourself up and, you know, just keep the passion for it because that will keep you, you know, getting better. So that's what I got to say about that. Well, and I, I, I always say, if you don't have a hater, then you haven't made it. I mean, that's just kind of yeah. what comes with the beat, no, you know? Yeah, it does come with the territory, especially these days where... Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, what did you say, Brett? I missed that. Oh, I, was just, I was just putting it out there. It's not that everybody hates Bumshaw. A lot of people love it too, but, um, you know, they'll be... They'll be oh, of course. You just have to realize that people, people will. People will love to pick on stuff. Yeah. So you can't, yeah. you can't take it too much to heart because it was, it was what you could do. And uh, people don't understand the difference between a Hollywood budget. It's cool that they mix the two up and they're like, man, I can't believe that effect looks so bad. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> what you can't believe it wasn't $300 million. Right. <laughs> like how cool well, is it with this? But that's because the your your stuff looks so good Mm -hmm. that they are probably expecting a certain level of everything and yeah i mean you can't have it all you know if shoot i mean even the opening shot of uh phantasma bloody ballet with the snow oh my gosh i know which which blew my mind to find out they were soap bubbles but okay that's movie magic right there oh was it really yeah yeah is that insane is that insane um that that whole sequence uh, is so, so brilliant. Pretty. You know, I remember when, when you first showed it, I said, that should just be your commercial. That you just, just show that. And at the very end have, boom, this is the name of the movie because that, <laughs> that looked like, that looked like it would cost a million dollars all on its own. It was the, it was the last uh, scene in the movie that I shot, which goes to show, uh, cause the movie did take maybe a year and a half. Maybe. I mean, I had a big dip in it. Yeah. Uh, so you could see where I started and where it kind of ended. Like it had a, had a lot more elements to it. Cause that scene was supposed to have a bunch of dialogue and there was like literally like the parents dying in it and all this kind of stuff. Uh, it was perfect the like, way it was. Uh-huh. What we need is like, let's give us some John Carpenter style music. 
We're going to pop these lights around and we're going to like show a visual of, you know, what the movie is going to be moving forward. But that made so much more sense. And I, that's one of my favorite scenes too. I love yeah. that. I love the ballet uh, shots in the beginning too. Just that whole segment. The titles looked cool. The music was awesome. Mm-hmm. Got to have good music. Oh, I wanted to give a shout out to another film, um, Deathless, that you shot. Oh yeah, it, we shot that down in Atlanta, and that yeah, was uh, yeah. Katie Carpenter's um, directorial debut. Um, Katie Carpenter, a friend of mine, she was wonderful in Bloody Ballet, and just a great person. I'm very proud of her to be involved with that, and a, a really excellent. If anyone gets a chance to see it, it's Deathless. It's a short. I, I I hope it's a proof of concept for a larger exploration of the ideas that it that it uh, deals with it's really really well done so the, your, your stuff pops up in in you're still doing some of the shorts and everything mm-hmm. and then you'll probably so when i'm watching it, i was like wow this is this is really good this is like something brett would do and then i just mm-hmm. I, I hadn't heard I, I talked to katie and everything but it somehow didn't come up that you were involved in the project or if it did it just went right over my head and i'm looking at the end and it's like you i'm like well that kind of, of explains course. why it looks like <laughs> something you would like <laughs> So, but a good that job. Was a good movie. That was fun to do. The location was awesome. And actually the set design was insane because a lot of those locations were just shells and they literally came in and decorated everything and like gave it all of its character. So um, that was really cool. It's been cool to watch Katie. You know, obviously Kevin does a lot of this, you know, yeah. stuff, but those two together have just been doing really cool Oh yeah, things. they're a great team. Great, you know, uh, just they, awesome they, people. Really funny. And um, I did the, I shot the pilot of that one. Um, Kevin's always working on cool stuff. I just like it. It's fun. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, they're, they're great. I don't know if I was ever so happy in my life as when I, I got to their wedding and you guys were there. You yeah. and Tina. That was like, oh my God, this is awesome. That was so much fun. Yeah, that was cool. Time. Kevin almost made me cry. Oh. Oh, I don't even know these people, but that sounds really <laughs> sweet. <laughs> you love them. You love them. And people want to know is, um, where they can find your work, where they can find you, where they can, you know, get more Brett, get more Brett, more Brett, yeah. more Brett. Well, first with Killer Babes and the Frightening Film Fiasco, you can find that on Facebook. That's the best way to look it up. And, uh, you know, like that, all that. Um, it has all the information to casting. Um, you know, I might do some teaser stuff now that I've got time. Mm-hmm. People with some footage. Um, but de- definitely do that. Um, Instagram handle is um, director Brett Mullen. And you can also find work on IMDb. You can uh, do Hulu, Amazon Prime, uh, 2B, Hulu, iTunes. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> some of the titles. Um, uh, Bombshell Bloodbath, I think, is taken down currently because I got the rights back to it. Um, so that'll be up on the drop of the thing once I do that. Um, but Bloody Ballet is available. Belladonna is also not available. I did a secret screening for people during the quarantine, but that, uh, that's when I got to see it. Thank you, yeah. by the way. That, that, was, awesome. that was just really cool. Like it was a shock to everybody to not know what we're doing. So mm-hmm. I thought maybe that would be a cool thing to do. But yeah, that'll be out too. And then um, is Detroit Evolution available for people to oh, to yeah. see it? Me too. Yeah. It was a YouTube release because oh, of, YouTube right. on right this time. Couldn't, they couldn't have the rights to it because of the actual right. game. But uh, that thing blew up. It, was crazy. it did. It really. It's it's got an amazing uh, amount of views and everything. It's an interesting thing because it is based on another intellectual property. But they were, I guess, they gave their blessing and, yeah. and supportive and everything, which makes sense because I think it's it's bringing people to the game. I'd never heard of the game. Um, <laughs> But it's it's a really good job, and boy, the passion, the fans of that game are um, really into it to an almost yeah. dangerous level. But okay, that but it, it's cool to see people that are so into it and and so excited at this. So the, the game wasn't actually RGB or that color scheme or anything like that. I just wanted to kind of give it my my own thing. So like the first day that we we're filming, like Michelle was with the actors and stuff like that. And I kind of set up, like I brought all of these quasar tubes and I was putting them around, like popping all these colors. And she walks into the like where it's model scene and it's all lit up. And she's like, this is awesome. This looks like Blade Runner. I was like, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I was, you know, 
and it pops up everywhere and it's got like the lighting and it's got my tubes that actually are like floating around in the background. This is so fun. So I'll get messages from fans once in a while there, like totally nerding out. I've got a, um, a Q and A uh, next month, I think. I'm supposed to with the, some fans and that'll be interesting because I know how hungry they always are about like knowing any information. So I'm yeah. sure I'll be able, I'll be like a good amount of nerding. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. I could just be like, blah, 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 and this lens and this filter and this, you know, <laughs> so we're doing so. Actually, I got to catch that. That sounds like fun. Yeah, it's a, it's a good movie. Yeah. You did a great job. I can't believe I'm still, yes. So what do you think, Bill? You <sighs> feel you, you feel like you got anything? You, you get you got you got something for me? No, I just I, I hope that uh, one day I hope one day the three of us can work on a project together because that would oh, just totally. be so much fun. And if from if from working with people like that, you know it's it's going to have a good. You know, it's fun to make movies. Sometimes they don't always turn out the way you wanted. You still had fun anyway. But with some people, you're going to have a good time and you're going to get a great movie. And that's totally. that's the best thing to do. Yes, it is. People make all the difference, right? Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, uh, that about wraps up this special edition of Gruesome Magazine with Brett Mullen. We hope you enjoyed it. Leave us a comment. Hit the like button down below. And maybe we'll do some more of these in the future. Um, Bill Mulligan and Brett Mullen, I want to thank you for joining me tonight. And uh, with that, we're going to say goodbye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Yeah.